Donna. And I'm Carrie. And we are Paranormal Chicks. Episode 107. And we're still in the midst of the apocalypse. Oh my goodness. Yes, we are. Everybody's staying at home, hopefully. Hopefully. Listening to this podcast. Hopefully. Mm Mm-hmm. Washing your hands. Anytime, please. You better be. Please. And please, for the love of all that is holy... Be nice to the people who are still working, Mm -hmm. who, you know, are doing your curbside food and who's doing the grocery stores and the medical people. Like, you don't need to be mean to them. They are working. As hard as they can. Yeah. And, like, I've seen someone lose their shit on a fast food worker. Oh, yeah. You told me about that. Which I don't understand because they're just doing the best they can, too. Yeah. And I'm like, they're still working. And they're having to deal with public, like, who might not be washing their hands and might not be doing any of the shit. And then you, Joe Blow, freak out on them. I wonder how that came about, Joe Blow. I don't know. Who was Joe and who did he blow? (laughs) Someone blew him, maybe. (laughs) There was a highlight this week, and we... Our podcast turned two. Will and the amazing moderators of the Facebook group got together and put together a little surprise clip. And it's all of the Creepster kids that were submitted. I don't even know how they No, no, no. I remember. I now remember Creep Mom. She had put, like, anyone who, like, do you have kids or whatever in the Facebook group? But I was like... Oh, it might be because, like, they're out of school now with, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. I don't have kids. Bye. Yeah. (laughs) But now I'm like, oh, my God, it was right underneath our nose. (laughs) Like, what the fuck? You know what's even more shocking is that they got Tiffany to do something with kids. (laughs) Very true. Very true. She's also like me. However, Tiffany did one time tell a kid that her cooler full of beer would hurt like it will hurt you like go go it will hurt you (laughs) or like it will bite you or something like that i was like damn because of course Tiffany took a cooler full of her beer (laughs) no i think it had everyone's beer and like my strawberry rita (laughs) because i'm hardcore (laughs) no no Oh, my gosh. So we want everybody to hear it because it was so meaningful to us. Hi, hi I'm Gwen, the creepy real, but don't get scared. Hi, it's Cameron. I'm a creepster kid, and you're listening to A Paranormal Chase. Happy second birthday, Donna and Carrie. Creep it real, and don't get scared. Hi, everyone. This is Patrick. Happy birthday to you. You want to come to my witchy house, my darlings? Have a scary happy birthday. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hayden, and I'm a Creepster Kid, and you're listening to a Paranormal Chicks. Happy second birthday, Donna and Carrie. Creep it real and don't get scared. Love y'all. So thank you so much, everyone who participated in it and got your little cute little baby voices, little baby Creepsters. So thank you, thank you, thank you. In addition to the amazingness you just heard, we have new Patreoners. So this has been an all-around pretty great week, Mm -hmm. in spite of the apocalypse. Yes. So thank you so much, Lauren P. from Illinois. Taylor S. from Texas. Brett C. from Louisiana. Avi K. from Florida. Nicole P. from Florida. That's another one from Florida. wonder if they know each other. And Amanda G. from Missouri. Thank y'all so much for joining Patreon. We hope that all of the extra bonus content that you're going to get helps you through the shelter in place, stay at home, all the things. Yes. Okay. For this week, we're going to talk about the marriage of Fred and Charlotte Gravy. Gravy or Grabby? G-R-A-B-B-E. Oh, okay. Fred was born June 2nd, 1939 in Indiana And Charlotte Sue Gore was also born in Indiana, January 31st, 1942. Charlotte's mom died when she was only seven. But when she was 15, Charlotte went out on a date with Fred, and he was 19 at the time. Well, here's the thing. On that date, Fred raped Charlotte. What? And she got pregnant from it. 
Oh my gosh. Well, it's 1957. I mean, who knew from date rape then? You right, know? Yeah. So she did what she knew was she married who got her pregnant. Wow. Gosh, so, bless her. I know. So she married the man that fucking raped her. So they had a son named Jeffrey. And then the next year came their daughter, Jenny. Well, just a few years later, in 1961, Charlotte found out that Fred had been cheating on her. And she's like, fuck this, I'm out. And they got divorced. Well, he used his manipulative ways, and they ended up remarrying in 1962. So they were only divorced for about a year. They moved to Canada for a little while and eventually moved back to Illinois. But in 1974, Charlotte's dad passed, and she inherited a shit ton, including a very successful farm. Mm. While the marriage was rocky, I mean, again, affairs, a divorce, you know, they've been through a lot. Charlotte was a really good mom to Jenny and Jeff, but, you know, she was so young, too, though, that they say that sometimes it was almost like she was more of a sister than a mom. Fred was really good at turning on his charms to just to be engaging with other people. I mean, he was an asshole to Charlotte, but to everybody else, he kind of could pull the wool over their eyes to where, I mean, they're even like, he's fun loving. He's, you know, he's kind of warm. He's all these things. But really, he would lose his shit to Charlotte and, and Jeff more so than Jenny for absolutely nothing. And it usually came with some sort of physical abuse. And there's a really good website called Forensic Files Now that I got a bulk of this information from. Jenny was interviewed as part of the episode for Forensic Files. She said that one time Fred, her dad, and Jeff, her brother, were in a physical altercation. And her dad bashed his head into the fender of a pickup truck. That's by the tailgate or the front of it? The front of it, I think. Okay. Either way, you shouldn't do that. Did they go to the hospital or doctors from these things? Were there, like, records of it? Yes, they did go to the hospital a couple of times. And their dad, of course, told them to make up stories. He got in a fender bender. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you set me up for that shit. <laughs> You set me up for that joke, and I just was like, oh, yeah, one time he told him he fell out of a hayloft. I was literally about to say that. Oh, my God. By 1981, Charlotte's 39, Fred's 42, and she's like, I've had enough. She found out that he's having an affair with... The bartender at this bar that he goes to, she's 24. Her name's Vicki Jane McAllister. And she's like, I'm done. Like, I'm I'm done. All these affairs, all this abuse, I'm done. So Fred has to move out of their house, and he moves into a cabin that's on their property. Because remember, they inherited this huge farm. I mean, huge farm. So Fred is cool with just, like, being separated. Of course, because he still he gets to live in a fucking log cabin mm -hmm. and do the bartender, get free drinks. Exactly. He doesn't want the divorce because he doesn't want to lose because it's all her money. Mm -hmm. On July 24th, 1981, Charlotte goes to work in the soybean fields and her kids never see her again. Damn. Supposedly, Charlotte had told her kids if she wasn't back from the soybean farm by 4.30 to come look for her because she said that she had been like involved in like a car chase. So when she didn't come back, of course, the kids immediately called the sheriff's department. Fred told the sheriff's deputies that they had gotten, he and Charlotte had gotten in an argument and that she chased him in her truck and then eventually just like, was like, okay, I give up. I go going towards the interstate. However, there were some witnesses, and they said, no, it was actually a lady with curly blonde hair following Fred in Charlotte's car, not Charlotte driving. Like, it was Charlotte's car, truck, whichever, but it wasn't Charlotte. It was a curly blonde. Guess who had curly blonde hair? Mm -hmm. Vicki McAllister, the mm -hmm. bartender. 
staged. If you're going to stage that, might as well make her wear a wig. Their argument that they had, quote unquote, according to Fred, was in the tool shed. Well, when police went to do some digging around, they found Charlotte's purse, her migraine medicine, and her uneaten lunch in there. So they were like, hmm. The police go look in Charlotte's safe deposit box, and they find a note from Charlotte, handwritten, with instructions to read upon her death. Now, this sounds like a um, real-life clue. <laughs> It was Fred in the tool shed. (laughs) Okay. So in the note, she said that Fred had been stealing farm equipment and said that she was very afraid of him and his business partner, Dale Kessler. Well, Dale Kessler sounds like a shysty name. (laughs) Does it not? Yeah, it does. Um, Okay. When the police asked Fred about, you know, hey, where were you the night of the disappearance? Old Dale Kessler told police that Fred was with him when Charlotte disappeared. But when he was questioned by a grand jury, Fred took the fifth and didn't say where he was. Hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, the case went cold for like four years. Jenny had put up a $25,000 reward because she's like an adult and married at this time. You know, and and it's like, even though she knew how terrible her dad was, she still was, in a sense, trying to protect him. Like, even on the episode of Forensic Files, like, she didn't talk about how he had all of these kids from all of these affairs and that he, like, refused to support them. Wow. You know, just shady shit like that. Uh You know, in addition to, like, the abuse and, you know, all that. 1984 is when Jenny and her husband hired a private investigator. His name was Charles Pearson. He actually found Vicky, the bartender, in Indiana. And she was like, look, Fred was an asshole. I want the 25K. Here's what I know. Oh, shit. This is what she said. She said she was hiding behind a tractor when Charlotte and Fred started arguing. So Fred repeatedly choked Charlotte, Mm. like choked her until she passed out, waited for her to come back, like wake back up, choked her again and kept doing it. So after she finally, God bless her, finally died Mm. again, he, according to Vicky, her words were, severely abused the corpse. So I don't really know what all he did to it, Mm. but... uh. Well, he's already raped her when she was little. Of course he probably raped the corpse. You're probably right. Vicky said that she helped Fred take Charlotte's body to the Wabash River, and under this maple tree in a trash barrel, they used diesel fuel to set her body on fire. Mm. And then put the rest of the remains into the water. Damn. Vicky was like, okay, okay. I was the one driving her car that day. Well, duh, you should have wore a wig. Because the private investigator, Pearson, had gotten all this information from Vicky, police are like, hell yeah. But. (laughs) Did they go through puberty? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) But it's like, okay, she's a woman scorn. Like, we got to have, we have no body. You know, we got to figure out how to prove what she said. So, they get this guy named Russ Carlson, and he's an arborist. Okay. Tree. Yeah. The tree where they had supposedly burned Vicky's body in the burn barrel with the diesel, he and a couple other scientists cut off branches from that maple tree to see, like, what they could find. And the growth rings in the trees showed, like, a developmental slowdown that was consistent with exposure to diesel fuel. Wow. So they did some more digging and they found petroleum products in the tree. And that the only branches that were affected were the ones that would, were directly above where they where Vicky said that they had placed the burn barrel. Wow. The police arrest Fred. He gets like a change of venue because everybody in the county knew who he was. I mean, you know, they were a prominent... Family, because, again, they had this huge farm. 
Vicki got immunity for testifying against Fred. Did she get the $25,000? Oh, I don't know. I hope she did. Not that she deserved it. But it's like a fuck you to Fred. Uh Uh-huh. But then again, I hope she didn't because it's Jenny's money and Mm -hmm. that lady murdered her mom. Right. Or or helped. Because honestly, like, she should have known about the money. And when her and Fred were over, been like, here we go. Let me tell you. But they had to find her. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's like, mm -mm, you were going to be shady for the rest of your Mm -hmm. life. And the thing is, is that was, it's all about the money. Like Mm -hmm. that's for, for all of them. Because I mean, Vicky, like, like you said, I mean, she wasn't, it wasn't like she was this conspirator that just couldn't live with herself anymore. Like she wanted the fucking money. She wanted revenge. And Fred, he wanted money. He didn't want to get divorced because he didn't want to lose that money from Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Well, Vicky also said when she was testifying, that Charlotte was not the first person that Fred had killed. What? A skirt? Yeah. She said that he told her when he was 14 that someone had killed his dog. Okay, I don't know what's coming next, but anyone who hurts my animal, whatever Fred did, I have to say, I'm with you. Yeah, I don't know exactly how he did it, but yeah, whoever killed his dog, Fred killed. I mean... Eye for an eye. (laughs) Look, you can do a lot of shit to a lot of people, but don't mess with my motherfucking dog. Well, supposedly there were two women that he killed over, like, a union dispute. Damn, he's all about the money. And then Jenny said that when she was a kid, she saw Fred kill a man in a bar fight. Damn. Who the fuck is he, Gaston? Well, their son, Jeff testified about all the abuse he had endured his whole life and jeff also said that fred threatened him if he testified against him wow paulina kessler who was dale's wife she testified though that she saw someone who looked like charlotte in the mall a year after the disappearance so fred had some people that were his supporters but i'm like okay what was he holding over dale's head And, or, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. did he threaten Paulina or was Dale as shady as him? And he's like, I'm going to expose all your shit. Exactly. Yes. Dale was as shady as he was. And he was like, I'm going to expose your husband's shit if you don't say this. So you're going to lose all your money, Mm -hmm. all your shit. And she's like, oh, shit. Exactly. It's so sad to see that some links that people will go to and that losing their money and not even being, like, poor, just losing yeah. what whatever, like, they'll do the dirtiest of dirty. I know. Just to keep that wealth or, you know, whatever. I'm like, dude, it's not like he's going to kill you. Like, you're literally just going to lose, mm-hmm. like, the boat, the house, and whatever else. Yeah. You know? And it's like, oh, my God. This is a person's life. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you have to go from a 5,000 square foot house to three? Boo freaking who? Right. <sighs> People. Okay. Of course, his attorneys are like, Vicky made it all up. She only wants the money. Blah, 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 blah. Well, the jury convicted him and he got sentenced to life without parole. So you think that would be the end of the story? Yes. It ain't. Dun, dun, dun. One of Fred's ex-lovers. Ugh, I hate that word. Okay. A woman named Barbara Graham. So, Fred was with Vicky, broke up with Vicky for Barbara. Okay. I don't know what made Barbara decide to do this. I don't know if Fred coaxed her. I don't fucking know. But little bitty ass Barbara Graham, she decided that she was going to free him from jail. She was going to... Bust up in that jail and take them all out and get him out. Oh, Lord. Yes. So she took a gun and went up to the jail to try to get Fred out. And she ended up shooting Deputy Mike Davidson in the leg, which he lived. And then she fired a couple of more, like, random bullets. And then, of course, was arrested. Yes. Uh, duh. Failed. Well, and here's the thing. I don't know what the appeal was about Fred. You know, he's like this 42-year-old guy. 
What's wrong with 42-year-old men, Carrie? Absolutely nothing. But, like, he's just getting these young girl. Like, so Vicky was 24. Barbara's 26. Like, I mean, he's not fucking, like, James Bond. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, what is so appealing about him that Vicky would help him dispose of his wife's body and then Barbara, who has three kids, would try to bust him out of jail. Because he's a master manipulator. You, you write about that. And they usually have all the charisma in the world. Well, Barbara got 16 years in prison for shooting that deputy and trying to break him out. Vicky, of course, she got immunity for her part in it. But she had to, like, completely change her identity and move, like, out of the area. Well, in 1985, the Grabby's main house and this smaller house on the property that their son Jeff was building all caught on fire, and it was all arson. Oh, my gosh. So, while the police couldn't prove it was Fred, they were all pretty confident that from jail, basically, Fred hired someone to burn all that property down. Then, two years after that, Fred got a new trial because apparently there were some, quote, faulty instructions that had been given to the jury. Well, you remember that his son Jeff had testified against him? Yeah. Well, before this new trial, Jeff went missing. Oh, shit. Uh Uh-huh. Mighty convenient. Uh Uh-huh. Did they check the... The same tree, all the things. Mm-hmm. Well, supposedly, Jeff could kind of be sketchy himself. Um, well, yeah, because he endured a life of abuse. Oh, yeah. But he had some, some run-ins with the law, like, he it, it just was a troublemaker. Like, he tried breaking and entering, all these things. Well, his wife said that he had gone to California because he was, I don't know, money things, doesn't matter. But that they were talking on the phone every single day because their son had pneumonia. So he was, like, constantly calling and checking in. And then Jeff just stopped calling to check in. Then a body was found in the Pacific Ocean a mile and a half off of Seal Beach. And it was Jeff. They are like, well, this is no accidental drowning. His boots are on. He's fully clothed. And someone had shot him three times and tied an anchor to him. Oh, shit. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, this was 10 years after he went missing. And so they had to do, like, they made, like, a clay bust of him, had to use dental records, but they eventually were like, okay, well, this is is Jeff. Some people say, like, this was clearly drug-related. There's no way that Fred had anything to do with this. But it's just, the Mm -hmm. timing is Mm -hmm. weird. Mm Mm-hmm. The police say that Jeff may have been killed because he was involved in a $7 million money laundering scheme. What the fuck? Yeah. Fred had another trial. They wouldn't allow Jeff's original testimony in, but they let his wife Cindy testify in his place. Mm. So he was found guilty again and got 75 years in prison. It's almost like, you know, you've heard of like the curse of the Kennedys. It's almost like they have, a curse on their family, too. Yeah. So, Jenny finally started recognizing the trauma that she herself lived through and came out and said that when she was five, Fred started sexually abusing her. Oh, no. And she's, no. I know. And she said that she would disassociate so much that she was in her 30s before she remembered some things. Fuck. Just when you think you can't hate him anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, he is scum. Jenny got married three different times. She had five kids. But then in 2014, one of her sons, Adam, was arrested for plotting to bomb Muslim holy sites in Israel. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. I know. It's just like, what the fuck? I know, I know. Why hasn't there been a whole fucking TV series on this family? I know. So, Fred is still alive. He's in his 80s. He's still in jail. And he's up for parole in 2022. Damn. Well, 
Uh, you want me to tell you where Fred went wrong? He got Vicky to help him when he should have got that bitch, Carol Baskin. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, either way, there's not a body. <laughs> well, that bitch ain't talking. I know. You're so right about that. Mm-hmm. And she wouldn't have wanted the money because uh, she already got some. So crazy. There's so, I mean, like, it's it's like, okay, the story's over. Oh, but wait, someone yeah. else died. Oh, but wait, someone else got arrested for something It's like a sudden bizarre. goodbye. Yes. For sure. This I mean, is a good one. So much. Like, you want bombs? We got them in the later, like, mm-hmm. we got it. It really is. It's, it's love, money, affairs. Kids. Rape. Fucking I mean, child abuse. Like, it's this is everything. Lifetime mixed with, like, I don't even fucking know. What's worse than Lifetime? HB. Well, no, that's not worse. This is, like, Lifetime and Oxygen Special. Yes. And something else. We network all together. Mm-hmm. With a, a little bit of, like, a Netflix original. Mm-hmm. I don't know what your story is going to be. We need a good one after that. It's something completely different. Oh, shit. Okay, so this week I'm doing something completely different, not paranormal at all, but sinister indeed. Okay. We're all quarantined. We're all required to stay at home, etc. So, of course, we've all been binging shows and movies. Hello, Tiger King. I found the love of my life. (laughs) But I want to talk about a Disney movie that is much more disturbing than kids realize, and honestly, probably... More than parents, because I kind of knew, but I had, like, no idea. It's not one of my favorites. Have you seen it? Yeah. I give you three guesses. Aladdin? No. Little Marm. Nope, that's your favorite. Beauty and the Beast. Could have, but no. It's Pinocchio. Mmm. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. He's a real boy. Can you do it? I'm a real boy. (laughs) (laughs) You did it. (laughs) Oh, my God. You are a fucking voiceover queen. (laughs) Except, meanwhile, everybody else is like, that sounded nothing like it. It did. It did, (laughs) y'all. So I'm going to talk about the original story, then the Disney version that we all know and love, question mark. Weren't most Disney movies, though, like Grimm's, whatever? Oh, yeah, for sure. And they were really creepy, scary shit? Oh, for sure. Okay. But this one... Is a whole new... It stayed creepy. I mean... It scared me as a kid. I maybe have seen it once. It scared me. So, yes. So, the original story is called The Adventures of Pinocchio and was written by Carlo Collodi and is, of course, darker, like you said, than the one that Disney produced. He was an Italian author, and it was first published in 1881. The original one had Pinocchio being a brat with the capital B. He was described as a rascal, an imp. I was Dang. like, I know the word. A disgrace, a ragamuffin. I love that word. Is it inappropriate? But I love that word. I know, but I was like, didn't know it was back then. I don't know why, but I thought it was like a current word. I don't know. <laughs> And even Geppetto, he was like, oh, my God, he's a wretched boy. Because right when he's carved, he immediately laughs and then sticks out his tongue at his now, like, father. Snatches his wig off. Then when he finishes his legs, he's like, bye, boy. And he runs away. (laughs) Like, thanks for my life. Thanks for these legs. But got to go. Whose wig? Geppetto's or his own? (laughs) Geppetto's wig. Damn. I'm like, boy, you were a block. Like, you were a stomp. Mm Mm-hmm. So, already, Pinocchio's bad behavior is showing that he's a bad kid. And what readers will soon find out is that bad things happen to bad children. And one thing to note is that the nose growing thing, which I remember being, like, the thing about Pinocchio. Mm Mm-hmm. Isn't the thing about Pinocchio. This only appeared a couple of times in the original story and once in the movie. What? Right? I'm like, that's about Pinocchio. Like, that's what I know. His nose grows when he lies. He only lied the one time? I mean, I guess. 
I literally know that his nose grew. <laughs> he was a puppet, became a real boy, and I think there was a cat and Geppetto. Yeah, the cat. The That's cat. all I know. And there was a flirty fish. <laughs> Me as a fish. That's all I know. <laughs> Thirsty as fuck. Lonely in her bowl. But okay. But here's what the difference is. In the book, like you said, it's always more grim. But okay, on this one, the blue fairy, you know, that is the one who like gave the wish for him to like be in like life. Like here you are. Okay. She summons woodpeckers to peck it back to normal. Holy shit. I'm like, uh, what? Uh, thanks for leaving that one out, Disney. Could you imagine? Mm-mm. Woody Woodpecker flying in for that? No, thank you. Like, what the fuck? In the book, The Cricket, Old Jiminy, he scolds Pinocchio because, you know, again, he's a bad kid. And he's like, you need to fucking act right. And Pinocchio wants to be like a star and doesn't want to work and all of that. And he's like... You're either going to be in a poor house or the jailhouse with that, like, attitude. That's what it's going to do. And he was like, fuck you. I mean, basically, gets a hammer and kills the cricket. Holy shit. Kills him. Splat. Bam. Like, (laughs) what? Holy shit. Yes. And it was originally intended to be a tragedy. And at the very end of it, Pinocchio dies by being hanged. By the fox and the cat. Like, hanged. Okay? But the magazine he was releasing, like, the chapters through urged him to keep going because their readers, mostly children, Mm -hmm. were, like, appalled, you know? And he was like, okay, but he's going to suffer more. So he survived the hanging, but later got robbed, kidnapped again, stabbed, whipped, starved, jailed. Punched in the head, had his legs burned off. And also in two different chapters, he was tricked into believing that he killed Geppetto and the Blue Fairy. So it's basically psychological abuse. And, I mean, turns out that the author really didn't like kids. Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm like, I mean, you took this hatred to a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. But it's like a children's book, too. You know? It's just so weird. Very graphic. And, like, it was graphic stuff. It wasn't just, like, and then he hammered, you know. No, 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 no. It was, like, really graphic detail. I was like, holy fuck. No. So it's not like he was telling the story of, hey, if you're a shitty kid, this is what's going to happen to you. He just was just telling graphic shit because he didn't like kids. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, of course... With the assistance of the Blue Fairy, he redeems himself and he saves Geppetto from basically being homeless and not having any money because he becomes a star in the puppet theater, gets him some money, so he becomes both a good and real boy. So now we have the Disney version that's not quite as bad. Pinocchio isn't a brat. But he's very naive, and he's just, like, blindly going through life because, you know, he just got born, like, yesterday. Yeah. It starts with lonely old Geppetto who wishes upon a star, and he gets his wish granted by the Blue Fairy. And his wish is to have a son, which, I mean, he's old as fuck. Like, Geppetto is old as fuck. (laughs) Well, look, men can have kids forever. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, do you know how, like, energetic a fucking kid is? <laughs> Geppetto, you're going to be tired as fuck. You have a cat and a fish. That's plenty. But I'm saying, like, the cat, it doesn't want to play with you. Figaro does not want to play with you. And the fish is in her fishbowl. True. So, anyway. But I was thinking about your cases and how some of the serial killers and stuff, when they're, like, making their victims into dolls... And all of that, which I know this is like, but you know, I have my crazy brain on. Okay, Geppetto wasn't being super creepy about it, but he was really like carving this puppet Mm -hmm. for no real reason. And he was like, oh my God, he's such a cute boy. I want a son. I want a little boy. Like, why? 
Well, maybe anyway. he felt like he missed out on that in life and wanted one. I mean, if he was old, he was looking back at his life, being introspective and thinking, God, I really wish I would have had a child. This is how Robert the Doll kind of shit gets started. Well, Geppetto. I'm just saying. It's not unheard of for someone to look back at their life and go, I wish I would have done blah. Okay. I mean, I do give you that. People have regrets. I get that. And his may be not having a real boy. I do get that. But it's just like carving a thing like, oh, he's so handsome. What a good little boy he would be. Like, okay. Yeah, no, that is weird. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he didn't say it so high pitched, I'm sure, and he didn't use those exact words. But I'm just saying, that's what Disney cut out. But I saw. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you know, I see the dirty and everything. I was gonna say you read between those lines that weren't there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any, uh huh. Anywho, while Geppetto is snoring soundly away, the Blue Fairy comes in, grants a wish, and brings Pinocchio to life, but explains to him. That to become a real boy, he must prove himself by being brave, truthful, and unselfish. Like, hold up, bitch. How are you going to do that? Because, like, who is all three of those things? Nobody. Mm Mm-mm. But I'm like, okay. So, like, odds were against him on that one. I was going to say, let's set some realistic goals here. Right. First of all, what do those words mean is what he should have (laughs) asked. Right. You just downloaded a dictionary in his brain. (laughs) Meanwhile, it's a Disney movie. We're reading way too much into it. I know, but that's the fun of it. So the Blue Fairy knows that Pinocchio is going to need some help because, you know, he just was made of wood without a brain like five seconds ago. So she gives him Jiminy Cricket, who is now Pinocchio's conscience. And in weird fashion, instead of being super elated and wanting to spend all the time with his new son, that he looked back on his life and said, oh, my God, The one thing I regret this whole time is not having a son. He's like, okay, get up. Let's go to school the first fucking day. Off you go. Be a real boy. The fuck? Well, he asked for, like, a school-age son. (laughs) He didn't. He did not specify. But also, like, I mean, if you were like, my oh my star, he's just going to be like, and off you go. Can we go back to Jiminy Cricket? So she just, like conjured him up but he knows enough to have a conscience no she didn't conjure him up he had came in because it was like you know he's a homeless cricket kind of thing okay and he was like oh it's warm up in there okay and he was just there and she was like hmm you there you sir with the top hat (laughs) do do you make good choices okay okay Mm -hmm. look come be his conscience right I mean, I guess a cricket does have a little bit more than a block of wood. True. So, okay, back to the school thing. So he sends him off with an apple, of course, for his teacher, and a textbook. Mm, how you get that textbook, Geppetto? Maybe it was a notebook. Do you know that it had words in it? I don't know, but if it was a textbook, how you get it? I'm pretty sure it was probably a notebook for him to take notes. Geppetto might be a pedo. I'm just saying. I could go down a rabbit hole. So Pinocchio does. He's going to school. But on his way, he meets two strangers who are very enticing and very intriguing. Honest John the Fox and Gideon the Cat. You don't remember any of this? Not even a little. Okay. So they basically trip him. But he's so naive, he didn't even notice. So they're like... They trip him? Yeah, they trip him. Okay. And, you know, he's like, whoa, you yeah. know? And they're like, oh, let me help you up, you know. So they proceed to tell him that they can make him a star because they see that there's this, like, puppeteer in town. And they're like, "Mm -hmm mm-hmm, he is, uh, like, basically a puppet, but with no strings. Like, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Mm-hmm. You know, so Pinocchio's like, oh, I don't know why he sounds like Mickey to me, but oh, boy. So they tell him. We can make you a star. Like, he knows what that is, too. Like, I, like, how does he know all these things? But let's go back. So they're like, if you just go with us, all your dreams will come true. So. This boy hadn't even been to sleep. He don't have no dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. 
And they're like, you don't need school. Because he's like, I'm going to school. And they're like, you don't need school. Like, where you're going, you don't need school. So they basically, you know, kidnapped him. And off they go. So already fucking kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Kidnapped. Does that not sound like some of your fucking stories? Like, ooh, a little girl in the mall. And you're like, ooh, I can make you a model. Mm -hmm. You come here by yourself. Come here. You know what I mean? Don't tell your parents. Mm -hmm. Well, they sell him to a man named Stromboli, which really made me hungry. That was like my favorite day in the cafeteria at high school. Absolutely. Anyway, so he has a marionette show. And Pinocchio is the star. Like he has this one day and he's dancing without strings. And after that long day, Pinocchio is like, okay, I cannot wait to tell my father about this. So I'll be back tomorrow. Same time. And Stromboli is like, oh, wait a minute, Mr. Postman, you're not going anywhere. You belong to me and locks him in a tiny birdcage. Okay. And then he's like, if you don't perform, like if you refuse to dance and sing up there, you'll be firewood. And like, oh, shit. it pans over and you see like a thing of firewood and it looks like an old little boy puppet kind of thing. Oh, shit. I'm like, the fuck? You gonna die. (laughs) I'm like, okay, so now he's been kidnapped. He's enslaved in fucking child work. You know, like, I'm like, how is this a classic? Go back in the vault. (laughs) I mean, honestly, but okay. So Jiminy Cricket, this time, like when he met Fox and the cat, Honest John and Gideon, Jiminy's like, no, 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 you don't want to do that. And he's like, yes, I do. I want to be a star. And so Jiminy's like, well, and so then he sees him like up there, you know, like got no strings to hold me down, all that. And so Mm -hmm. Jiminy's like, well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe he doesn't need school and he is going to be a star. So he leaves, you know, like, woe is him. He wasn't, you know, a good conscience, but He comes back because he's like, you know what? I need to say goodbye. Like, you know, whatevs. Well, then he, lo and behold, here's Pinocchio up in a fucking birdcage. Well, Jiminy can't help him. So luckily the blue fairy comes, does a whole spiel. She gets him out. They go off on their way. And him and Jiminy Cricket are going to race home. Okay. Why the conscience thinks this is a good idea. I don't know. Well, because she plucked him off the street. (laughs) <laughs> so what were his qualifications <laughs> breathing <laughs> so they're going and just as they're going good old honest john and gideon show up again look and- if you have to say that you're honest you're not <laughs> if you have to say you're a good guy you're not <laughs> and they persuade him to go with them again but this time it's to a place called pleasure island That sounds like a show you'd watch. I mean, you're not wrong. So, let me go back. While Pinocchio was locked in that cage, those two fuckwads were boasting in a bar about how easily they tricked this boy and all of this and how stupid he was, blah, blah, blah. Well, while they're doing this and they're like, ho, 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 and ho, 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 that whole thing, there's this even worse character known as the Coachman. And he comes over and he's like, well, I am looking for stupid little boys. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then like whisper some stuff that's not subtitled. So we don't know what the fuck he says, but you can probably guess. Mm -hmm. Then he tells them, because they're like, okay, Pleasure Island, but what about the law? You know, because I mean, they know this isn't on the up and up. And he's like, don't worry about the law. Because they never come back as boys. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, like, when he says that, his face is, like, all red and shit. Like, his eyes are green. Like, I'm like, the fuck? Like, no wonder this scared me as a kid. Okay? So, he's like, any prospects you have, you like, you find them, you bring them to me, I'll pay you. Like, that's it. You'll be happy, I'll be happy, and they'll be happy. They're going to Pleasure Island. So, with that, I mean, say hello to our little friend called human trafficking. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I mean, the first scenario was too, but. Mm -hmm. But it's like, now it's a whole other thing. You know what I mean? These people, it just keeps getting worse and worse. I'm like, Disney, this is some dark shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So off they go to Pleasure Island. Because, of course, you know, at this time they persuaded Pinocchio to go. How they did that, too, I was like, oh, my gosh. He tells them about how Stromboli locked him up in a cage and all of the thing. And they're like, oh, my gosh, I think you're having an allergic reaction. But there's a place called Pleasure Island that, you know, you can get cured. You know, and he's like. He's having an allergic reaction mm -hmm. to what? A cage? <laughs> and he, you know, Pinocchio, I mean, he's a day old. Is like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? And it's like. He was trying to tell that he was held captive, but it was to the people who sold him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just like, ugh. okay, so off they go to Pleasure Island and they can only get there by boat. But first, the coachman, obviously, get it, the coachman, he's driving them to the boat. And there's like a shit ton of kids all around, but... Pinocchio and this one guy named Lampwick. That's who we focus on on this ride. And he is all about Pleasure Island. He's like, no school, no cops, no problems. You can be as destructive as you want. Free booze, free smokes, free ice cream. Anything you want. How old is this kid? He seems a little older than Pinocchio, but still young. They're all very young. And the like, he's, like, selling it for him, you know? And the whole time, the coachman is, like, is up there, like, whipping the donkeys that are doing the coach. And he's, like, hee, 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 my plan is working, you know? Yeah. But I did write this. To be honest, Carrie for sure would be lured away if they said free self-serve ice cream with sprinkles and you could sleep all day. I mean, you're not wrong. Little Carrie would be, like, sign me up. Big Carrie would be, like, oh, fuck yes. Mm -hmm. I mean... You're not wrong. <laughs> anyway, when they get there, Lampwick is like, let's go poke someone in the nose. What? Yeah, that's like, they're going to fight. Okay, and Pinocchio's like, why? And Lampwick is like, just for the fun of it. We can do that here. And Pinocchio's like, okay, Lampy. And off they go, like, do, 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 do. I'm like, what the fuck? What? Yes, and I just thought that was too funny not to share, like, Let's go poke someone in the nose. Because when they get there, the announcer's like, a brawl is happening at blah, blah, blah. And, you know, all the things. And, but also, you can see how Lampwick is the quote-unquote bad influence. Mm -hmm. And Pinocchio, who has never been influent, like he's never done any of this shit, is easily taken by him. And he really thinks they're friends now. So there's scenes showing all the different places you can go on Pleasure Island. And it's like debauchery overload. There's a tobacco row. And it's literally, it's like statues of Native Americans. And I think, now that I'm trying to think, but out of their mouths, it's like cigars. Like, doop, 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 doop in the streets. And these little kids are like lighting them up. And I'm like, sidebar, have you noticed on Netflix now? At the beginning, when it tells you, like, what something's rated, and it'll be, like, sexual activity, like, language, smoking. They did that for Tiger King. But I've noticed it on a bunch of stuff now. I, that's the only time I noticed it, and mm. so now it's like I'll notice on the it. crown and stuff. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. But for Tiger King, they they needed to do that, because, shit, I wanted to smoke after that. <laughs> I, know. I was like, good God, these people. Y'all, if y'all don't watch Tiger King, go watch it. Tiger King and The Crown, which I, I could be wrong about them having it on The Crown, but I think they do. But those two shows watching it, I was like, I want a cigarette so bad. <laughs> so, okay. Tobacco Row, a model home that they can destroy whichever way they want, which is so ridiculous, but whatever. Like, old Lampy, he's like, you see that stained glass window? And, like, throws a brick through it and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, my God, you're a little shit. Mm -hmm. You know? Ugh. And, I mean, they just had other, like, again, the brawling, and they had, like, where you can play pool, and you can drink beer, all the things. And I'm like, these kids look four and five and 12, and, you know, yeah. just, oh, my gosh. 
Anyway, once all the boys have proven themselves bad enough, they magically turn into donkeys. And some say it's like the curse of the Pleasure Island, but then some say it might be from the alcohol they drink because Lampy and Pinocchio both, like after they drink some of the alcohol and stuff, that's when they start to transform. So they turn into donkeys and then they end up working in mines or are sold to the circus and they work until they basically are exhausted and die. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing is like they're jackasses. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God bless a fucking America. Okay. So later that night, Jiminy Cricket, he is looking around because he follows them and he's like, what the fuck? Because he goes on tobacco row and he's like, something's not right here. And I'm like, and he fucking smokes. And he's saying, something's not right here. It's so like, what the fuck? Anyway, so he finds the coachman and he finds them, like him and his little minions, loading crates of donkeys onto boats. The coachman is examining every donkey and everything. And what he'll do is ask Like, what's your name? And if they're like, he strips off their clothes and kicks them into the crates. Like, either go into the mines or the circus. Okay? But if they can still talk, like one donkey, Alexander, and he said, what's your name? And the little donkey was really cute and said, Alexander. He was like, nope, send him back. So he, like, kicks him to, like, This group that still has them clothes on, whatevs. They're all crying to go home. Like, it's so sad. And, like, they're begging for their freedom and to be human again. And so the coachman goes over there and, like, he has a whip. That's his, like, big thing. And he's just, like, cracking it. He's not hitting them, but he's, like, cracking it. And he is, like... You have done this to yourselves. You came here, you were bad, and now you have to pay the consequence kind of thing. Okay? But, like, the what got me and, like, tore my heart out is Alexander. And he's like, I want my mama. Oh. And it's like, oh, my God. You know, I mm-hmm. mean, were all of these kids, like, be like, yeah, we can be badasses. And, yeah, but then, like. They're still kids. They're still kids. Yes. Okay. So this point, Jiminy is like, oh, wait. I get what's going on. You know, like, all right. So he's like, I got to go get Pinocchio. But by this time, Lampwick has transformed into a donkey, which was fucking scary. Like, you see it on the thing. Like, it's fucking scary. And, like, when he's yelling it, And, like, because you can kind of see the shadows and stuff. But, like, he's yelling it and he yells mama at the end. Lampwick? Yeah. And it's like, my God. Like, it's heartbreaking. Well, Pinocchio, he had donkey ears and a tail. He managed to escape the island with Jiminy. And they think he, they, People who are talking about this, they think because he was a puppet and not a real boy that it was slower to work on him. Maybe he didn't drink enough of the beer. Like, whatevs. Also, I forgot. I need to point out that the coach was drawn by donkeys. Mm -hmm. So, the coachman basically is using donkeys that were little boys, basically, to bring other little boys there. Mm Mm-hmm. And they can't say anything. Mm -hmm. Which is like classic human trafficking, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's so it. Is that not it? Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, oh my God. Like, did people watch this and make a handbook? Right. (laughs) So they escaped the island. Well, then the Blue Fairy sends word that Geppetto was out looking for Pinocchio because he didn't come home from school that first day. Oh, boy. And he was swallowed by a giant whale. Geppetto was? Yes. Which we all know was probably the scariest part to me of the whole thing because aquatic animal. So Pinocchio and Jiminy, is like, they're like, we're going to rescue your father. They deliberately get swallowed because they need to help him escape. 
So this is how he's like, okay, we're going to set a fire. So he's going to sneeze and then out we go. That's how we're going to do it. Well, then there's like a whole chase scene, which was fucking scary. Inside the well? No, he sneezes. Oh. But then he's trying to catch them all. Gotcha. And I'm like, how the fuck they start the fire? There's shit in there. Obviously, because he eats everything. So, so just like like a fucking match? There's like, yes. Okay. And basically, Pinocchio is a Boy Scout, Eagle Scout at this level. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then there's like some rocks. And when the whale like gets there, all the people squeeze through the tiny holes. And everyone makes it to safety besides Pinocchio. And there he is, face down in water. And he's dead. Like, fucking dead. (laughs) Like, face down in the fucking water. Well, finally, the Blue Fairy shows up and, you know, brings him back to life, but says, like, you've been unselfish because you risk your life. Blah, 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 blah. You're now a real boy. And everyone is happy, you know, besides all the people who were still on Pleasure Island Mm -hmm. that didn't get rescued and all of the criminals that went free are happy because Mm -hmm. whatever. But Pinocchio and Geppetto were Together forever. Yeah. So that's it. That's the whole movie? That's the whole movie. But, like, we had slavery, child abuse, kidnapping, human trafficking, like, but in such detail, but... When he said they don't come back as boys. Right. I mean, they don't. They come back as donkeys. But. Just like sexually abused people. I know. Like. Are never the same. They're never the same. And even when they get to Geppetto in the whale, he still has his donkey ears and stuff. And so Geppetto's like, the fuck? You know, mm-hmm. and he's so ashamed because he was like bad and yeah, whatever. And it's like he was so ashamed he didn't want to tell him. And it's like, so same thing. It's the same thing. And so, like, when kids are lured away with things like alcohol, drugs, that kind of thing, and then the people who are supplying it for them are the ones that are abusing them, they don't want to tell because they don't want you to know they were out drinking. They don't want you yeah. to know that they were doing drugs. Yeah, exactly. I was like, this is so mirrored. And I was thinking, you know how so many parents and stuff are like, kids shouldn't play video games because it's so violent. Um, Mm -hmm. um, hello, this is before um, any Resident Evil ever fucking came out. Mm -hmm. But really, that's the thing with literally every single movie like that. Mm -hmm. There's always some form of tragedy. And I mean, Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. Stockholm Syndrome at its finest. Right. Little Mermaid, he falls in love with somebody he doesn't even know. Oh, yeah. But you know what? In most of the Disney movies, the bad guys do get punished in some way. True. Nothing here. Like, there's not one thing. Because Conspiracy Hat put on, it all goes to the top. Mm-hmm. And there's a huge ring of all the things that we don't even, can't even scratch the surface on. Well, you know, there, too, with the whole Pleasure Island thing, there's that, well, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. But I don't think it was him. It was another whole sex ring thing. But they went to an island, and that's where, like, all the shit would happen, and it was all little boys and stuff like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -mm. Not off the top of my head. But just like with the... Jean Benet case too like it again it's all allegedly all rumored but that her dad and that friend of theirs Fleet White that had a plane and stuff that they were flying kids in and out you know so it's like I mean it's not unheard of yeah and it's it's really weird you know what too in all the Disney stuff usually the bad people are the ones who have the money Mm -hmm. like Gaston Mm-hmm. Cruella DeVille. Mm-hmm. The coachman. He's the, you know, like... Yeah. I can't think of anything else right now, but... <laughs> but you know what I mean? Because people with money... Money is above the law, usually. Can be. Well, but Disney's also makes all of the villains, quote-unquote, ugly. 
in some ways, too. Yeah, that's true. Which is fucking bullshit. Yeah. Very. Well, that's weird. Right? I mean, there's whole, like, there's whole YouTube videos on the Disney conspiracies, like, with their movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, like, I mean, you know, the classic sex was written in the cloud, you know. Of uh, Lion King. Yeah, but there are so many different things and conspiracies attached to Disney in general. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, y'all let us know what y'all think. Yes. And I mean, hey, again, what else do you have to do? Go on Disney Plus, watch it. And let us know if you think it's as creepy as I think. I wonder if they really are going to put some of those movies in the vault like forever, ever. Just because even if you watch back to movies in the 90s that were kids movies, it's like, whoa, Mm -hmm. they said all that. They did all that. You know, you would never see that in a kids movie now. So I wonder if they really are going to put some of those away forever, you know? Right. I mean, I guess they have in that one, that uh, Dixieland or it, – because it was racist and stuff. Yeah. But then again, that's censorship, so. Well, then again, this is a handbook for kidnapping. True. Like. But uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, the handbook's out. I know. People have been following it for decades. I know. It was just creepy. And – To see now, too, like, being so obsessed with, like, true crime and everything, I see shit everywhere, you know, like, in Mm -hmm. all of this stuff. And I'm like, again, with Geppetto, I'm like, are you a pedo? So, sorry, this brought up something else right when I said that. That, like, with this wave of true crime obsession, it's brought about, like, two different sides that, yes, people now learn and we're not victims and you know like you learn more about stuff and so you're more prepared Mm -hmm. and you're more alert and whatever or you're like me and you see like crime and creepiness everywhere you look and it's like nah that man's just looking at like peas right beside you and he just you know like you're wearing perfume and it's like really strong and you know what I mean but I'm like he be looking at me weird you know I will say God, this was, uh, my mom was alive, so five years ago, at least, and we were in Walmart, and we were looking at cards, or like in that section, and there was this man, and he was just like watching this girl. I was like, Mama, do you see this? Like, this man is watching her, you know? And so like, I didn't want to leave that area, not like, what can we do? But still like, hey, maybe he won't do anything, and I was like, he can either take her, like, abuse her, do, like, mm-hmm. what, rob her? I don't know. And so we were, like, watching. Finally, like, she walked off, and then he walked off in a different direction. And, like, okay, you know, world is okay. Let's go. Because, of course, they couldn't yeah, do it again on another aisle. But whatevs. Didn't think about it. Was on Facebook, and someone posted about a creeper in Walmart watching women in like in that section and it was a like undercover security i was just person. about to say hey, are you sure he wasn't undercover security mm-hmm. and she was still in something but but i don't think she was but like i i, I don't know you know i don't know yeah whatever but it was like also dude like back up a little bit and don't be so creepy yeah you know because like that's where you get maced and shit like that mm-hmm. because if i was me now I probably would. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've been like, holy fuck. Like, what's going on? Like, what do I do? I would have been like, Carrie, I'm going to FaceTime you. You tell me what's going on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but like, anyway, I just thought it was so funny because I was like, mama, this is that guy. You know? And then like later on, I was like, oh, he's not a creeper. Um, He works there, mama. Like, he was getting paid to do that. Yeah. But, oh my gosh. Okay. You know something else that we didn't talk about? What's that? Uh, the families of all those missing kids that were on Pleasure Island. That's so true. Like, all of those families with missing kids that will never get answers. Sorry, I just thought about it. And, oh, I don't know. It just keeps, oh. Like, I feel like I did watch a documentary on human trafficking. Yeah. You know what I can't get out of my head on yours is that he fucking raped her. Mm -hmm. And she was so young and just the 
times, uh, the mm-hmm. climate, you know, of the times, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't even really be considered rape. Oh, for sure. That even happened with people who would get married young mm-hmm. and they didn't want to, like, they didn't know how to have sex or whatever, but the husband was older and mm-hmm. was like, oh, no, 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 we are going to have sex on our wedding night, you know? And mm-hmm. it's like, <laughs> wow. But, oh, my God. Like, he was just a terrible person. Mm-hmm. Terrible. And manipulative and just, again, knew how to get what he wanted from people. And took and took and took from his own fucking kids. Mm-hmm. Just like everyone did from Pinocchio. They would just take and, you know, take and take and take to get what they could out of him. Because yeah. he was so, It was. it's like the opposite. He was so manipulative, but Pinocchio was so naive. Yeah. You know, too, our stories, like yours just kept going and kept going and kept going. Well, then, you know, like Pinocchio, you think, well, shit, he got sold into slavery well, shit, now he's gone off to do this. Then, well, shit, his his dad mm-hmm. is been swallowed by a fucking whale. Yeah. You know, so ours both. Like an Energizer bunny. Right? Well, I guess we, at the very least, gave y'all something to uh, go down that rabbit hole while you're quarantined. Right? You can watch Forensic Files, mm-hmm. Disney+. Plus, Because also Peter Pan is on that same thing. Mm-hmm. And I never watched Peter Pan all the way through, but those two movies, like, scared me when I was little. Hmm. That's my sixth sense. Like, I know, like, that's creepy. Yeah. Well, if you're bored and you don't have anything to do, head on to our Facebook group. That's always hopping. It really is. We've been doing some Facebook lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just trying to pass the time. Thanks for listening, and remember, creep it real, and and don't don't get scared. scared.